a rich landowner gets a call from his butler while he's on a business trip. Hello, sir, it's your butler, he greets him. Has something happened, he asks. Why are you calling me? Yes, your cow Gerda died. You know, the one with the light brown spots, who was always so happy as she was being milked. What? I have 5,000 cows, one cow makes no difference, don't call me unless it's something important. All right, bye, then. Wait, just out of curiosity, how did she die? Well, the barn roof fell on her, and it was just too heavy. What? The barn roof fell? Well, the barn burned down, and once the walls went off of course the roof couldn't stay up. Unfortunately for Gerda. Why the hell did the barn burn down? Well it caught fire from a spark from your farmhouse, when it burnt down. My house. How did it catch on fire? Well, your son tripped on the stairs and broke both his arms, and that knocked over a candle holder, which lit the curtain on fire. And that was the beginning of what happened to poor Gerda. And why were you lighting candles instead of just turning on the lights like a normal person? Well, we wanted a properly solemn atmosphere for burying your wife. <laughs> Three guys are sitting at a rooftop, when one of them says, you know, the winds in this location make it so that if you jump from the rooftop, they'll push you back up before you hit the ground. Second guy replies, Nah, that can't be true man. First guy replies, don't believe it? I'll show ya, and then he jumps off the rooftop. Falls quickly, and right before he hits the pavement, he's going up again, back to the same spot he jumped from. Second guy is surprised and says, holy shit man, it is true. I'm trying it myself, and he jumps from the rooftop. He falls quickly and gets splattered on the pavement. Third guy turns to the first guy and says, you really are, and when you're drinking, Superman. <laughs> a married couple wakes up one morning, and while still lying in bed, the wife turns to her husband and says, maybe you shouldn't go to work today? What do you mean? Why shouldn't I go to work today, replied the confused husband. I think you've been working too hard, so maybe instead of going to the office, you should take a few days off, pack a suitcase and go stay with a friend for a few days away from home. The husband thought for a moment and decided to jump at the suggestion before it disappeared. Within moments, he was up, dressed, and started packing clothes into a bag. Just out of curiosity, the husband asked while getting ready, how did you come to the conclusion that I've been working so hard that I need a break? You were dreaming about your work all night. The wife answered. Really? How do you know I was having dreams about work? Because every two minutes you were shouting your secretary's name. <laughs> a young man goes into a liquor store and approaches the shop owner. Customer, excuse me, can I ask you a question? Shop owner, sure, son, go ahead. Customer, why are you selling Jack Daniels at $30 per bottle? Shop owner, and why shouldn't I, exactly? Customer, but the owner of the shop across the street sells it at $20 per bottle. Shop owner, well, if you don't like it, why don't you go and buy there? Customer, well, because right now, they don't have any Jack Daniels. I assure you young man, said the shop owner, once I run out of Jack Daniels, I'll be selling it at $15 per bottle. <laughs> a big bus stops at a roadside eatery. The passengers flood inside the eatery, and as they take their respective seats the driver calls the manager aside and explains, look sir, we're from the mental asylum down the road. I'm taking the inmates for a ride. When they're done eating they will insist on paying with bottle caps like they do inside. Please humor them and accept their payments. I'll clear the entire check at the end. So, as each passenger finishes eating and pays with bottle caps, the manager solemnly accepts them. After they were all seated in the bus, the driver approached the manager who presented the bill to him. The driver carefully scans the bill. Excellent. I'm grateful for your cooperation. 
You don't know how hard it is to handle these people. Now, would you change for a hubcap? <laughs> An elderly woman visited a store that sold jade and requested 7 kilograms of potatoes. The owner was delighted to help and started packing the potatoes. However, the woman stopped him and requested that each potato be wrapped individually. The man complied and asked if there was anything else he could help with. The woman then requested 4 kilograms of onions to be wrapped in a similar manner. The shop owner packed the onions and asked if there was anything else. The woman requested 7 kilograms of carrots. Let me guess, said the owner with a sour face, you want them wrapped individually. Oh, that would be grand, she said. The shop owner fulfilled her request and packed all her items in a bag. The woman then asked. What are in those crates behind you? The man flushed red and said, Madam, these are grapes and they are not for sale. So there's this guy, and his best friend in the world is his pet duck. Takes it everywhere he goes. One day, he goes to the movie theater, and the lady selling tickets says, Hard no, you're not taking that duck into my theater. So he goes around the corner and stuffs the duck down the front of his pants, and sneaks him into the movie. About 20 minutes into the movie, the duck starts getting restless and squirming around. So the guy unzips his pants so the duck can stick his head out and breathe. The lady sitting next to him elbows her husband and says, Honey, the guy next to me just unzipped his pants. Just ignore him, honey. But his thing is sticking out. Just ignore him, honey. Well I would, but it's eating my popcorn. It was Sunday and the preacher has just finished an inspiring church service when Rick, the wealthiest man in town, stood up and asked to address the congregation. The preacher wasn't surprised at this. Just make it quick, Rick. He sighs. Sure father. Said Rick. He cleared his throat and addressed the audience, I can still recall the day when I earned my first dollar, he began. That same evening, I attended a church meeting where the speaker talked about his humanitarian efforts. At that moment, I had only that single dollar to my name, and I had to make a tough decision, give it to the speaker's cause or keep it for myself. I chose to donate it all, and I truly believe that God blessed that decision, which is why I am a millionaire today. He finished, a tear gleaming in his eye. Oh yeah, an old woman in the audience stood up, I dare you to do it again. <laughs> Three youngsters were in the midst of a spirited debate to determine who had the swiftest dad. My dad is the fastest. Anya exclaimed excitedly. He's a builder and can chuck a brick off the fifth floor, race down the stairs and catch it before it even hits the ground. That's nothing. Brad boasted. My dad is much faster. He's a professional archer and can target an arrow at a wolf's head, fire it, and then run and grab the creature before the arrow even lands. Incredible, exclaimed Tommy. But I think my father is way faster. What makes you say that, asked Anya and Brad curiously. My father has been working at the DMV for 20 years, Tommy answered. He's expected to be off work at 5 p.m., but he's so speedy he's home by 1. man walks up to the employee and says, Yeah, I would like, uh, hmm, the Polish sausage. The employee kind of chuckles and says, Polish sausage, you must be Polish? The man gets immediately angry and yells H-E-Y, just cause I ordered a Polish sausage doesn't make me Polish. If I ordered French fries, does that make me drench? If I order Swedish meatballs, does that make me Swedish? If I ordered a Cuban sandwich, does that make me Cuban? Give me one good reason you have the right to think I'm Polish cause I ordered a Polish sausage, cause I'm not Polish. The employee sighs, sir, this is a hardware store. Hey, there, I put a lot effort into making these videos so please subscribe for more jokes and stay happy, thank you.